So, uh, in Parkinson's disease, um, as many neurologists would say, um, exercise is half the battle. Um, medication is very important, but movement, exercise, training the body and training the brain is of uh, primary importance so that we can keep people active, work towards improving stability, mobility, uh, strength, rotations, and reduce fall risk and also hopefully slow down disease progression. All right, through exercise, especially through uh, elevating our heart rate, um, we can create what is a, a growth hormone, a protein, it's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor or BDNF. And as that circulates in the brain, uh, data and evidence and research shows that that helps to uh, slow down disease progression. And also, it may help to give birth to new brain cells, because we know that in Parkinson's, uh, the substantia nigra is the part of the brain that is uh, primarily losing brain cells, which is important because that, uh, dopamine is produced primarily there. And when we have less dopamine, we have compromised movement. So if we can slow disease progression, slow progression of dying brain cells, then this is going to help uh, very likely to slow down disease progression uh, through elevating the heart rate. That's one way of doing it. How do we, uh, can we manage disease symptoms? Like um, we know in a person with Parkinson's disease, our number one concern is, uh, uh, I want to say it in Espanol, falls, caídas, right? falling down. We don't want them to fall down. So what we do is basically it comes down to training the brain to be a better, let's say, multitasker. Um, we, we do all kinds of uh, cognitive training during focused movement to help the brain develop as a better, uh, more efficient uh, multitasking mechanism to help our body reduce fall risk. And let's say we can multitask, dual task better, um, overall just improve movement, stability, and mobility, and quality of life. Okay, so the whole program is designed to do this. We know that in the United States, um, in a lot of places in Europe, and in Mexico, and I think many countries around the world where I travel, there is a, a, a gap between where healthcare or insurance coverage perhaps cuts off and functional life for the person with Parkinson's. My goal is to fill that gap with an education that helps them to know what to do, learn what to do, and then to actually be able to do it. When they walk out of the workshop, even on Saturday, day one, they're gonna know things that they can do immediately that are going to help with uh, movement and reducing fall risk. You know, as we get older, we, we tend to lose some of the abilities that we had when we were very young, if you think about how a baby develops, the baby will be laying down and then eventually push itself up a little bit. Um, eventually it gets onto all fours and then it crawls and then it pulls itself up and then it stands and then it walks eventually. And this takes a while, maybe a year, right? Well, for people with Parkinson's, we're concerned about falling. I have a question that I ask um, with every person it's, with Parkinson's is, what's your first challenge of the day when you wake up in the morning? Sometimes it's rolling over in bed and they can't do it. So we teach them how to roll. Which is, and so far we're 100% success in getting people to roll over uh, front to back, back to front, both directions. This fundamental skill, when it is given back to them, um, not only gives them the skill, but also improves their, their mood. Because they, they can f walk into a workshop or a session feeling defeated by Parkinson's. But now, when they learn how to roll over again, they're, they feel like fighters. They feel the spirit that they're going to fight and they're going, they can do more than they realized. And it gives the caregiver a break. Right, so we'll do a lot of things on the floor because we want the floor to be our friend. The floor is our amigo because if we're on the floor, we need to learn how to navigate the floor. So we go through primal movements of going from on the floor in case they fall, 
rolling, up on the fours, crawl, uh, pull ourselves up, and hopefully put ourselves in a safe position. Um, and actually what's really good about that is that it's really good for our bodies. It's good for our muscles, the muscles we usually never use. We don't use them like that as adults. But the more we do use them like that, the better it is for us. So that's, that's another thing we do. Um, there's more. The uh, cognitive training. So when we look at uh, things like people with Parkinson's oftentimes, um, they have a tendency to have a stooped over posture forward head, so the center of gravity is forward, we work on gradually improving posture. We won't, don't want to do it too fast because they can't usually adjust to a new center of gravity quickly. But um, we know that when we have better posture, we have better movement. We move more optimally. So we work towards posture, but also as we're working towards posture, we're doing uh, various forms of exercise. It could be um, uh, jumping through an agility ladder with two legs or um, th there's so many things we can do exercise wise look up focused movement but at the same time we do the focused movement we're doing a cognitive thing for example uh, we have like four different types of cognitive that we do we have um, direct recall so maybe I have them walking a figure eight pattern while I'm playing catch with a ball and then I say, uh, say the alphabet, or how do you spell Cordoba? How do you spell Cordoba backwards? How do you spell Argentina? How do you spell Argentina backwards? While we're playing catch and they're walking or jumping. Another one would be spatial. We can have them doing a focused movement similar to what I just said and say, okay, tell me, how do you get from here to your doctor's office or from here to your house or here to your favorite restaurant? A spatial type of uh, cognitive training that activates the cerebellum and other brain areas differently than direct recall. The third one is called decision making and um, those boxing gloves. We can put on gloves and if I say right, you hit right, right, left, left, all kinds of things we do. Um, maybe we progress and say when I say right you hit left. So I say right, left, right, left, and there, I mean, you can be real creative with this. And then the fourth one, last one is uh, called problem solving. And this is a combination of, this is a combination of decision making and spatial, I would say. This would be like, um, I have an obstacle and I have to figure out, do I want, uh, am I, how am I gonna get it on the other side of it? I'm gonna go over it, under it, around it, or through it. Kind of like parkour, right? So they have to think, they have to make a decision, and they have spatial things. One of the things we really like about that is because when people with Parkinson's uh, approach like a, a, a threshold in a surface or a surface change in the floor or a doorway, they may freeze. So if we get them used to going through objects and maybe doorways and this and that, um, and over obstacles or around or through or under, then this helps to improve their ability to do that so that they will freeze less, hopefully. Many times they freeze less. So basically to summarize that whole thing, they're doing a focused movement and they have to think at the same time. Research shows that this helps to develop new neuron and uh, synaptic firing patterns in the brain. And those, it, those synapse, synapses, those firing patterns, as they wire together, like neurons that fire together, wire together, the more of these overlapping patterns we have, the better we are at multitasking, dual tasking, and less chance of falling. So that's, that's the summary.